stoichiometry can be used for more than just calculating masses. Um, as we've gone throughout the year, you've seen that many times we've had reactions take place with solutions. So you're going to see some uh, volume relationships uh, on this screencast. And we've also had gases form, so you'll see some volume and pressure ideas um, added here as well. So like any other equation, the first thing you need to start with is the balanced equation. So I'm going to write calcium hydroxide plus HCl. And you'll see up in the text of this that this is a very specific type of double replacement called neutralization. So uh, HCl is an acid and calcium hydroxide is a base and um, they are going to form calcium chloride and HOH or water. So uh, if you remember back when we were doing double replacement, I said one of the reasons a double replacement can react is the formation of water. So if we were doing the net ionic equation for this, I'd have OH minus ions and H plus ions making water molecules. So because water pulls the ions out of solution, it causes the reaction to take place. So something is chemically changing in this. Okay. Now, you don't write, need to write the net to do the stoichiometry, and you don't even need the phase notations most of the time to do the stoichiometry. Um, but you do need to balance the equation. So if we look at this, uh, the reason I'm writing water HOH, so I have two OHs here, so that means I need two OHs here. So I'm going to balance that with a two. Okay, that's going to give me two H's here, and I'm going to come over here to have two H's here. Okay, and that two will also distribute to the CLs, and then I have two CLs, and I'm balanced. Um, part B is going to be the actual stoichiometry part, and you're going to have a lot of numbers and a lot of things to track. So one of the things that I model is um, actually kind of taking that information and organizing it into the balanced equation. So first number I run into is 0 0.100 molar HCl. So I'm just going to write that um, underneath my HCl and um, wants to know how many milliliters of that are needed to react completely with 75 milliliters of a 0 0.500 molar solution of calcium hydroxide. So the 75.0 milliliters and the 0.5 I'm going to write underneath. Well, normally I would write them one under each other, but since I'm a little space for space here, I did, I did not do that. So you have three numbers, and you have to decide which one to start with in your bridge problem. And if you go back to the very first unit of the year and we talked about this, you always want to start with a measured quantity. So I'm going to start with the 75 milliliters of calcium hydroxide. And labeling is important. So we didn't have milliliters before. I'm going to ask you... So since this is in milliliters, and remember that big M is moles per liter. Okay, molarity is moles per liter. So I need to get this to milliliters, or from milliliters to liters. So I'm going to cancel my milliliters, and then I'm going to use my molarity. So 0 0.500 moles per liter. Okay. Um, I'm a little squeezed for space. Normally, if I was doing this on the board, I would write 0.500 moles of calcium hydroxide again, but I'm really squeezed for space here. So I'm going to put one mole of calcium hydroxide on the bottom and two moles of HCl. So again, this is my mole ratio from the balanced equation. So my moles are going to cancel and my calcium hydroxide is going to cancel. Again, that mole ratio from the balanced equation is the only thing that allows us to change from one substance to another. So that gives me moles of HCl, and I do have some information um, from the original problem that uh, it's 0 0.100 molar HCl, so I'm going to use that, and 0 0.100 moles has to go on the bottom, and liters are going to go on the top. And I'm going to continue this on the next line. Since it has to be in milliliters, I then need to convert back to milliliters. Okay. So like any other bridge problem, okay, I'm going to multiply on the top. Okay, that is one liter. That really is messy. I don't know if I could erase all of that and start over. Um, my liters are going to cancel. If we look uh, back... Uh, this thousand milliliters is on the top here, okay, and on the bottom here, so I can actually cancel the thousand all together as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, when I do the math for all of that, um, I get 750 milliliters. Um, all of my measured quantities, the molarities and the volume, are to three sig figs. So uh, I need to have three sig figs in my answer, so 750 with the line or 750 with the decimal point at the end uh, milliliters would be my correct answer for that.
Okay, for this problem, um, it's a new question was the molarity of a nitric acid solution if 15.5 milliliters are needed to react with 13.9 milliliters of a 0.755 molar NaOH solution. Again, this is another neutralization uh, reaction. First thing I'm going to do is write the balanced equation. So nitric acid comes from nitrate, so it's HNO3 and NaOH. Okay, this is also going to give me water. So I'm going to do the HOH and I'm going to get sodium nitrate. Okay, this is my favorite kind of uh, reaction to balance because everything's one the whole way through, so everything checks out there while well, everything's plus one or minus one. And again, I'm going to do my organization. So my nitric acid is 17.5 milliliters, my sodium hydroxide is 13.9 milliliters, and it's a 0.755 molar. Okay. Now, this problem asks for molarity, so again, molarity is moles per liter, so I need to make sure that I understand that concept. So I have a volume, and I have two volumes, I have to decide which one I want to start with. Well, the one that I have the most information about that has something already paired with it is the sodium hydroxide, so my bridge problem is going to start with the 13.9 milliliters of NaOH. Okay, again, since I have milliliters and molarity is liters, I'm going to convert uh, milliliters to liters, and then I'm going to use the molarity. So 0.755 moles of NaOH to one liter. Okay, so my liters cancel, and then I'm going to do my one mole of NaOH to one mole of nitric acid, HNO3. When I calculate all of that out, I get 0 0.0105 moles of HNO3. And that's what I want to know the molarity of. So I already have the mole part of my relationship. I just need the volume part of that. So I'm going to put the moles over the volume of the HNO3. Okay, that's in milliliters, so I've got to get that out of there to get to liters. Cancel that, and that will give me a molarity of 0 0.600 molar, or moles per liter. And so, big M or moles per liter, either of those are fine. Question three is a multi-step uh, problem all relating to the reaction of sulfuric acid with sodium hydroxide. Again, another neutralization reaction, so I'm going to pause and write the equation. You can too. Okay, your balanced equation should, or your equation should look like that. It just needs balanced. Um, again, if I use my idea of H2 here, so that's going to balance with just this H. So I'm going to need a 2 in front of my HOH. That's going to give me two OH groups, so I'm going to need a two in front of my NaOH to balance that, and that's going to help me because I have two sodiums, and then I have two sodiums, so I'm balanced there. <clears throat> okay, again, um, I'm going to look at the information that's given and match that. I have 150 milliliters of the sulfuric acid solution. Okay, remember that decibel point is another way of showing that that's three sig figs. Now this one's nice because I only have that one number, so I'm going to try and squeeze this here. I'm going to start with my 150 milliliters of H2SO4, and I want to know grams of water, so this is just a plain old mass-to-mass -mass problem. <clears throat> so milliliters to liters, and then I can use molarity, my 0 0.250 moles per liter. One mole of H2SO4 for every two moles of water. And then the molar mass of water is 18.02 grams. I'm going to calculate all of that out and I get 1.35 grams. <coughs> 
stoichiometry covers a lot of different mathematical relationships. So um, you might remember from doing like the magnesium oxide lab or some of the ones where we filter, you have to be able to recover your product. So there's something called percent yield. I'm going to just show you, and this is pretty easy. If you understand percentage, it, it won't be a big deal. Um, what you calculate is not always the amount that you can recover. So like if you have uh, filter paper, sometimes stuff gets stuck to the filter paper. Um, water can evaporate if there's heat given off in the reaction. So that's a very likely possibility for this one. So we should get 1.35 grams from the calculation, but if at the end of the reaction we only have 1.23 grams of water, uh, the percent yield is going to be the amount that you recover over the amount that you calculated, and because it's percent multiplied by 100. So this one's just a real easy um, what, you, what you get o over what you should get. And then multiplying that by 100, and I don't even care if you show that, if you understand the concept of percent. Um, I don't need to show that. 91.1% yield on this particular reaction. So that can be something else that you can do with this. Okay. All right. Um, last one looks at uh, how much NaOH. So this is all part of the same problem. So I'm going to add the 67.3 milliliters up at the top here at my equation. Um, <clears throat> And I'm not going to start with that, so just be careful with, I'm looking for the molarity, so it's going to be like the one we did with number one, where it's sort of a two-step process, or excuse me, number two, where we found moles first and then used that volume. So I'm going to always start with what was given in the problem. That's always the safe bet. And again, milliliters to liters. And then 0 0.250 moles of H2SO4 per liter. So notice this is another way of labeling, so labeling where you need it. So one mole of H2SO4 for every two moles <coughs> of NaOH. I'll give you the moles of NaOH, which in this case is 0 0.750 moles. And I'm going to divide that by my 67.3 milliliters. And like I did last time, milliliters to liters to cancel those. And that's going to be a molarity of 1.11. So again, you can use uh, different problems more than one time to find different parts of a stoichiometry problem. The mole flower again. So I think you have this on a yellow piece of paper on... Uh, in your notebooks. So we are going to be looking at this part, and uh, these may not be in the same order that they were in class, but we're going to be looking at solution volume, so we're going to be looking at molarity and mole relationships that way. Okay. Um, so since I know volume, I'm going to use molarity. Okay, I'm starting with my volume. I'm going to use molarity as my conversion factor to get me to moles. So from moles, then um, I can do my mole ratio for my balanced equation. So um, you'll see that um, paper that we already have um, going for us, which is the mole flour. So we're going to be looking at the mole flour. So we're starting with a solution volume. So we are going to use molarity as our conversion factor. That'll get us to moles. And uh, moles, then, we can use to get the mole ratio from the balanced equation.